I suppose the, uh, the, the, the hard question of these people who are in, in, in conflict, that's the, uh, the, the difficulty. Depends who you are when you answer that question. I give you my own answer, but I, I just have to say, if, if you were to put it that way to uh, a member of the Republican uh, community uh, in Northern Ireland, their answer would be, well, they wouldn't have been fighting with the Brits in the first place if, if, if they were there, and they shouldn't have been. I mean, that's, that's, that's the answer. Um, if you ask a unionist um, a person, they will see it, and I think they will take the view, you're, you're dead right. Um, they, they, they shouldn't be, shouldn't be there. Uh, I think we give you the, 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 I always try to stay in the middle of all these things to, to, to try and bring things together. Um, and you know, even Dr. Paisley, David Trimble and others, the, 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 the view was, listen, we've had a conflict, it's been horrendous. And it has to come to an end. We've all suffered. Uh, we've all learned. Uh, and the people are absolutely embedded now uh, peaceful means moving forward. Then it means that uh, you have to do things that were own people. Uh, and, and I think that's 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 where the I mean Martin McGuinness was the chief of staff of the IRA uh, in, in, in Derry. And um, you know, he, he was very early on, back his really white law back in 1972, those of you in history, uh, he brought him and Jerry Adams over uh, to try to negotiate with him in 1982, and then <coughs> that fell apart, and it was 15 years later before the next effort was made. And 15 years later, who, who did they end up talking to? You know, a few thousand people dead in between, Martin McGuinness and Jerry Adams. So it, it, it's um, it's always difficult. It's, uh, and whenever I, I go anywhere in the world, I say, listen, you can never say two peace processes are the same. Um, and you have to have people. Uh, I do a fair bit of stuff now with the World Economic Forum and conflict resolution. But you also ask the same question all the time. Do you agree with talking to the terrorists, depending on whether you consider them terrorists or not? But, um, and I wouldn't always say with the category, but if you agree with the people, the, the terrorists are not debating with them. And you, know, you say there has to be somebody within them who, who, who is interested um, in talking. I mean, I have no doubt today that the, the British government will probably do their best to see if there's anyone in the Taliban uh, who is capable of talking to them. And it doesn't seem as if there is today, but you know, I'm sure if there was, they'd be trying to work on it. And that's the difference. If there's not, you're left with a position that there's nothing else. You, have to, you just have to fight on that. In Northern Ireland there was, and there was definitely a group who wanted to talk. On all sides, it was on the, the loyalist paramilitary side as well. And, but I, I just give you a complete the question this way. It's the hardest thing to do. I mean, you're brought up a certain way. I brought up a democratic uh, constitutionalist politician. Uh, and to deal with people who have been involved in, in murder and mayhem of whatever side, it's not easy. I, mean, I went, went into a room again, I won't remember, I won't mention the name to protect the, the guilty. Um, uh, he, he said to me, he said, he said, uh, T shirt, he said, do you realize there was eight people? I mean, eight, seven hundred. Do you realize that to the best of our knowledge, you're the only one in this room that hasn't murdered a person? And uh, it was a nice start to a meeting. <laughs> you, you just have to you, you appreciate it. Uh, it goes down your gut, uh, but you try and either smile or look fearful and just go on and don't jump to the bar. You know? But uh, that's, that's the difficulty all that. Is, 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 it, is it right to talk to people on the other side? I have to say to you in, in, in Northern Ireland and in a lot of other places in the world, Middle East is ridiculous. If you don't, you might get peace. And that's the risk. That's the risk. Um, one, one of the most contentious issues in Ireland this year was the publication of the Ryan Report concerning the, the, the extensive child abuse within the Irish Catholic Church. Um, the publication of that report, the report was obviously not very emotive for many people. And it led to some criticisms of the deal uh, your government did with the church uh, concerning compensation, where I think it was the state um, was responsible for 90, about 90% of the compensation to, to those who were victims of child abuse. Uh, I was wondering if you could talk a bit more about the report and in a particular uh, response to those criticisms. 
Yeah, um, I set up the Iranian uh, course in the market, as we, a decade ago. Um, 1999, May 1999, uh, a group of people had come to me uh, when I was leader of the opposition uh, that had been uh, abused emotionally and sexually abused um, in uh, religious uh, institutions when they were committed there uh, by the state um, <coughs> minor enough issues back 20, 30, 40 years ago. And uh, a lot of these people's lives have been totally and mostly uh, wrecked because of the, the experiences. And not alone were they never compensated in any way, which was not what they came to me about. Uh, it was recognition that this had happened, make sure it couldn't happen again, and um, to get a, a, a state apology uh, for, for the wrongdoing that uh, was committed against them. And I gave that in May of, of 1999. Uh, out of that apology, that was something that was widely accepted and, and, and you know, obviously went down very well with the, with, with the people uh, concerned. And there, were, there were many of them. Um, a lot of these people had tough lives. Many of them, their parents were dead. In other cases, the parents weren't able to look after them. Um, and they were committed to these institutions in a very barbaric way that it happened because was, they, they never did anything much wrong when you look back at the cases, just the way law and justice was in, in those days. Out of that turned into the issue of compensation. Um, there were only a certain number of religious institutions involved in Ireland, as elsewhere, a lot of religious institutions. Um, they were predominantly uh, and almost exclusively uh, Roman Catholic institutions. There were sisters, brothers, and nuns of the Catholic thing. And um, I took the view uh, that I wasn't going to spend any political time trying to sell off churches and you know, schools belonging to the Catholic Church of those particular ones to try and get the money. My view was this is the state's obligation. And whatever about um, the, the abbot or the, the head of the present day institution, there was no point in having a row with him about what, what, what some uh, misguided uh, person did in the earlier years. So, uh, now there was criticism um, that I should have you know, forced the churches to make more money. Um, I, I think political correctness has forced them to make a bit more. Um, but to, to be honest, it, it's, it's not even a good idea because in, in my view, what it's doing is good people of a younger generation who are in these institutions are now feeling that they're being blamed for things of the past and they're either going on sabbaticals or vanishing or leaving. Um, so it, it was an affair that attack on the present day people for sins of the past. And, um, it may go with politics, um, uh, but, but, but other than that, I think the state, it was a, the state put these kids in these institutions and the state were obliged to pay. <coughs> well, it's good. I, I think the good thing out of it, but it it it, it has it has changed um, how the, how the, the, the all the churches, but particularly the Catholic Church, now deal with offenders. It's brought in very tough codes, and you know it's a proper system uh, of dealing with people who who commit any offences in, in either schools or colleges or institutions. And you know I, I don't see it ever happening again. But years ago that they that they. Um, there was no way. I mean, what they did, if somebody was an offender, if somebody was a sexual offender in one place, they moved them to another place. That, that was the punishment, and it was a, it, it was a, it was a bad system. <coughs>